severe drought threatens Hoover Dam Reservoir, and water for U.S. West. Had the formidable white arc of the Hoover Dam never held back the Colorado River, the U.S. West would probably have no Los Angeles or Las Vegas as we know them today. No sprawling food, bowl of wheat, alfalfa, and corn. No dreams of relocating to live in a tamed desert. The river, and dam, made the West, now the climate crisis threatens to break it. The situation here is emblematic of a planet slowly, inexorably overheating. And the catastrophic consequences of the extreme weather this brings, Hoover Dam is the height of a 60-story building and is 45 feet thick at the top and 660 feet at the bottom. Its construction, in the teeth of the Great Depression, was a source of such national pride that thousands of people journeyed through the hostile desert to witness the arrival of what has become an enduring monument to collective effort for the public good. The engineering might of Hoover Dam undoubtedly reshaped America's story, harnessing a raucous river to help carve huge cities and vast fields of crops into unforgiving terrain. But the wellspring of Lake Mead, created by the dam's blocking of the Colorado River and with the capacity to hold enough water to cover the entire state of Connecticut 10 feet deep, has now plummeted to an historic low. The states of the West, primarily Arizona and Nevada, now face hefty cuts in their water supplies amid a two-decade drought fiercer than anything seen in a millennium. We bent nature to suit our own needs, said Brad Udall, a climate and water expert at Colorado State University. And now nature is going to bend us. Surveying the dam's sloping face from its curved parapet, Michael Bernardo, river operations manager at the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation, admits the scarcity of water is out of bounds with historical norms. While there is no average year on the Colorado River, Bernardo and his colleagues were always able to estimate its flow within a certain range. But since 2000, scientists say the river's flow has dwindled by 20% compared to the previous century's average. This year is the second driest on record, with the flow into Lake Mead just a quarter of what would be considered normal. These are scenarios that aren't necessarily where we expect to be in our models, said Bernardo, whose work helps deliver a reliable level of water to thirsty western states. Nearly 40 million people, including dozens of tribes, depend on the river's water. We're getting those years that are at the extreme ends of the bell curve. We've seen extremes we haven't seen before, we now have scenarios that are very, very dry.